everyone. I'm Margaret Miller. I'm the viola professor here at Colorado State University. We host All State Orchestra every February. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about how to prepare for your recording auditions. Both of these excerpts, the Beethoven and the Mozart, do show up on professional orchestra lists. So once you've got these in your fingers, you'll be good to go for quite a while. A couple of things about the Beethoven. Have your metronome handy. This is Beethoven's metronome marking, so do try and get it up to eighth note at 92. I would encourage you to practice all three excerpts under tempo, especially the last one, because it's very awkward with the string crossings, and the intonation is also rather challenging as well. So with the first excerpt, start in the lower half of the bow. This is the melody. You get to, violas get to play this with the cello section as well. So make sure that you give the line some shape. Yes, it's marked piano and it's marked dolce, but there is some shape. There are high, high points and low points. Be very careful about the rhythm in measure five. This is one of the reasons why this excerpt gets asked. It's the one measure where the rhythm is different. And then going from measure six to measure seven, careful not to make a crescendo. It's a subito forte. And then a subito for piano on the downbeat of measure eight. And then again, same thing, no crescendo from measure eight into measure nine. It's one of the things that makes Beethoven Beethoven are the subito dynamic markings. The second excerpt is um, a section where the viola section is accompanying the brass because they have the melody at this point. So it's a heavy kind of spiccato. It's not on the string. So you'll notice um, in the playing that the, it's off the string, but it's a slightly longer bow stroke. In order for the sforzandi to come out really well, make the sforzandi a little bit longer, make the bow stroke a little bit longer. First one's a challenge because it's on an up bow, but the open C is on a nice down bow, so you'll be able to get that effect in there. And again, on the third excerpt, this is the one that you will most likely, like most of us, spend the most time on. It's very challenging, not just for intonation, but navigating the string crossings. So I would suggest and make sure that you have your bow in between the G and the C string, just so you don't have to have a lot of arm motion because that can make the whole line sound uneven. This can also be phrased, just like the very first theme as well. One final thing on the third excerpt, try not to start too softly because the next to last measure is a subito pianissimo. Just like Beethoven likes subito loud dynamics, he also likes subito very soft dynamics. So make sure that the piano's not too soft so you can make the contrast. And for that measure in particular, measure 105, second position is a lifesaver here. So I would encourage you to get really comfortable with second position. It's a position we use an awful lot in orchestra playing. <laughs> For the Mozart, very different kind of playing. I find Mo Mozart very difficult to play well because A, this is a presto. This is from the last movement of his symphony number no. 35. And so it's quite fast. You have to make sure, again, that the intonation is really spot on. One of my new mottos this year is intonation and rhythm before speed. So making sure that it's really well in tune and it's very clean with your bow before you start kicking up that metronome. And, but forte in Mozart's not the same as playing forte in Beethoven. So you don't want it to be too heavy. It needs to have a lot of sparkle behind it. And yes, pun intended, the rests do count. 
So make sure that you're really good friends with your metronome for all of these excerpts, just like you do with your scales. So a couple of general tips. Again, slow practicing is the best practicing. Be mindful of intonation, rhythm, dynamics, phrasing, clarity of sound is also very important. And I know you all listen to recordings of both of these experts, which is great. Just make sure that you understand what's going on in the rest of the orchestra while you're playing these excerpts. If you have an understanding about that, that informs your preparation and how you play. Have a plan. Know when you're going to be making your recording for Allstate and have your program ready to go at least two weeks beforehand. So those last two weeks before you make your recording, you're just tweaking. You're not having to learn anything at that point. Play for family and friends, record yourself a lot. You'd be amazed at what, you, what your sound is like, what the clarity is like, the things like dynamics. So recording yourself is also really important. One of the things I tell my students when we're working on orchestral excerpts for auditions is imagine that you're sitting in a viola section. What's that sound going to be like? And then also, what's it going to be like to see a baton in front of you? That can be really helpful too when you're practicing these excerpts. And for string players, it's incredibly important to remember to breathe. When you get ready to play, to cue yourself in, breathe, move, because then you're in rhythm and it's a whole lot more comfortable to play. So make sure your breathing is a very conscious part of your practicing. Any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. And I look forward to seeing you all in February. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this Colorado All-State Prep video. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit music.colostate.edu for more information, including the opportunity to schedule an individual visit with the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Good luck on your audition.